Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to the first video of our Execute Automation YouTube channel. And first of all, happy new year and hope this year is going to bring a lot of happiness and prosperous to everybody. And this year, at least let's hope as an endemic instead of an yet another pandemic year, which we have been going through for past two years. So let's get into the software testing trends of year 2022. The testing trends of 2021 that we saw was these, like we discussed about test automation testing tools are going to keep rising like Playwright and Cypress. Similarly, cordless test automation is going to be on rise as well. And the QA ops, IOT and RPA. And most of these slides points that you have seen over here are actually true because we saw that the test automation tools like Playwright actually improved a lot last year. Similarly, cordless test automation testing tools keep on rising like testing as a service. Similarly, QA ops like testers are involved more and more right now to deploy the application on a cloud platforms and test the application using Docker's and Kubernetes and stuff. So that's all kind of relatively true that we saw in last year. And IoT testing as well as the RPA is still keep on rising. At least this is going to be the trend of this year as well. And it is going to keep rising this year as well. But the top software testing trends of 2022 is going to be something like this. We are going to have a continuous rise of AI in testing as well as testing of microservice will introduce new testing patterns and mindset more focus on software quality from code rather than the manual documentations. CI CD without automated test codes will be considered useless and more new testing tools will evolve with new features. So let's see each one of them one by one in a bit of detail manner. The continuous rise of AI in testing. So you can see that the AI is starting to play a key role in the automation testing. We have seen this trend last year where AI with image recognition and vision API of Apple tool is awesome. It's keep evolving. It's keep improving. A lot of companies are starting to adapt to the Apple tool. That's great. And similarly, we also talked about a new testing tool, which is test rigor, which was kind of an natural language based testing tool with few keywords that you have to use pretty much like how you do every day, like every colloquial language that you speak in every day. That's just rigor. We talked about it and that automation testing tool was quite awesome as well. So that's test rigor and it is keep evolving. A lot of bigger companies are actually using test rigor as well. Similarly, AI in UI element identification and resolve the automated test issues is also improving. For example, if there is any fragile UI element in the application as well as there is any element which is kind of new and that element doesn't even exist. The test automation testing tools are quite intelligent enough to map that element and identify them and fix them and run the test during the next iteration. So that's improving as well. So that's about the continuous rise of AI in testing. I mean, they are all actually talking about the UI side of things because that's what we're talking about in this particular place. But when it comes to the microservices, the testing trends are going to be introducing a new patterns and mindset. That's what is the second trend of this year, I think, because microservices are keep evolving. So more and more focused testing of domain services are now happening. For example, if you want to do the testing of the microservices, then it can be done via integration testing instead of the UI testing, because that's where your services are going to communicate and each and every service are going to be specific to a specific domain. And if you wanted to really test their domains, then we need to have the testing done on the integration level rather than the UI testing level. Similarly, contract testing by service isolation has to be done instead of the API testing because API testing still relies on the actual service to be up and running. But if we do contract testing with different service isolations, so that's going to be a new mindset and the pattern that we have to look at, especially in the year 2022. Similarly, efficient testing of event streams is also going to keep rising. For example, testing event consumers instead of the final processed data in the database is what we should think of. For example, if you're looking for Kafka or RabbitMQ or something like that, then if you're going to be looking at how we test those streams, then this is what you should be doing at. And finally, testing application via Docker containers running on a cloud or local setup 
is going to be a thing since there may be hundreds of microservices spawn to run an application we need to test especially on these kinds of platform rather really testing on the local application that's how things are going to be as well so these are the way that we could able to test the applications especially while testing the applications which are going to be microservice based and these applications testings and patterns and stuffs i have already talked about in my course automation testing of modern application with csharp.net which are released in Udemy a couple of days before. And it's kind of popular because a lot of people are kind of enrolling it. And the testing that I was talking about in this particular mindset is exactly what is replicated on that particular course. So if you have time, you could go ahead and watch that course. It is quite awesome. And the next trend is more focus on software quality from code rather than manual documents. Because companies are now adapting the agile principles and getting rid of the documentations as much as possible, at least for the how-to of the software development and testing, most of the documentations in the companies are either what to and where to and who to. That's what the documentations are actually talking about. But if you want to see how-to of the software development and testing, it's going to be mostly on the code rather the manual documentation itself because it's kind of obsolete. But if you could think about the documentation of what we should be implementing, where we should be implementing and where to deploy and who is responsible for doing that, probably those are the areas which the code are not going to be very helpful, but the manual documentations like Confluence page or SharePoint or Azure documentations are going to be helpful, but mostly the how to's are going to be sitting inside the code and that's where the trends is going towards. So if you keep talking about the legacy Excel sheet or Confluence page for even how to, then probably that's not going to be the case, at least starting this year. Well, as I said, with the trend of the software testing documentations of how to is already starting to fade and baked inside the application code and test code, making test code as a source of truth rather than manual documentation and legacy Excel sheet are going to be the case most of this year. And finally, the CI CD without automated test code will be considered useless. This is true, right? If you don't really have a CI CD in place, then probably the automated test code that we are writing is not going to be useful as well. So automated test will be considered as the most intrinsic part of even application build and deploy from the CI CD pipeline. And as the quality is considered as the foremost part of the application development, CI CD is super important and every code commit from the developers will trigger and complete test execution, making the quality first product development. And this is how we can improve the quality of the product as well. So that's something, again, it pretty much like the last year as I was talking about, this is gonna be still maturing and testers are gonna be involved on that a lot as well. Finally, more new testing tools are gonna to keep evolving. As I told you, every year this is happening and there is no big change on that. And I probably think that the testing tools, especially in the automation side, like test trigger are going to keep evolving and the existing tools like Playwright, Cypress are going to keep evolving as well in the UI part of it. And the year 2022 is going to be even more awesome if there are going to be more maturity in terms of the cryptocurrency meta are going to happen. So probably next year is going to be even more interesting than this year. At least this year looks like pretty much like last year. But yeah, I think next year is going to be even more awesome. So once again, thank you so much for watching this videos, guys. And you guys have a great day. And once again, happy new year. Meet you in our next video.